Hello everyone and welcome to the first part of chapter number 3. The name of this chapter is Financial Markets, Money Markets and Institutions. And the reason why we are studying this chapter in financial management is because financial managers should have a strong understanding of the financial markets so that in the time of need they can take strong decisions, uh, they can take informed decisions uh, from where to raise finance and if they have surplus of uh, funds uh, they should know where to invest it so let's with that in mind let's start with our chapter if you pay, come to the, the page number 23 of your lecture notes we uh, have uh, our first topic over here that is financial intermediaries now financial intermediaries uh, basically link those with fund surplus to those with funds deficit so that uh, they can avail the opportunities they have uh, by utilizing those funds and benefiting the provider of finance as well. This results in basically the economies of scale in terms of finance, in terms of money and also risk pooling and maturity of transformation. Now it is better, best understood if I can put that in a chart. I've already drawn a couple of houses. The uh, best form or and the most simple form of financial intermediary is a bank. Here we have got a bank in the center. So what a bank does is basically takes fund from households and companies. The households involves people like you and me who save money from our salary and our income and uh, give it to the bank or deposit it in a bank to earn a nominal uh, interest over it and companies also do the same they, when they have surplus fund they tend to put it in a bank to or deposit it in a term uh, deposit so that they can get the benefit of putting their funds in the bank and what bank does is give those funds by pooling together those funds it, it makes uh, it creates a large fund and gives it to the companies which are in dire need of those funds. Now here what a bank is actually doing is taking funds from the household and companies who have the surplus funds but do not have the opportunities to invest those funds and giving it to the companies who actually have the opportunity to invest or to grow their businesses however they lack finance to do that. Now, a uh, bank will always charge the companies to the to the companies a higher interest rate to uh, against uh, the interest rate which is which it is offering to the household and company that is its own provider of finance. There are a number of benefits for this. The risk is pooled together in a single fund so that if even if the debt holder is different faulted or is unable to pay for the debt uh, uh, the household and companies will not get affected by it moving on to our next area that we have is financial examples of financial intermediaries and the first is commercial banks now banks what they do is uh, as I just told you they take funds from the household and companies and give it to the Business and companies that are in dire need of those funds so that they can expand their businesses. Then we've got financial houses. Financial houses mostly involve brokerage houses. They what they do is they persuade businesses, banks, and individuals to invest in particular stocks uh, or shares. Then we have got mutual societies. Now mutual societies, what they do, they were very famous in the 1800s. What uh, the phenomena be be behind mutual society is very interesting. What they do actually, it is formed by a number of members. They do not have a shareholders. What they do is pool their funds together or start uh, the depositing a small amount of their income into those funds. Now that fund is uh, used to, uh, to do investment in other businesses so that that fund is utilized to or is expanded now, if any one of those members who initially formed this uh, society gets into the financial difficulty or retires, he or she will start to obtain funds from this 
from mutual society on a monthly basis so that they can carry on. Uh, mutual society does not offer dividends. They are not made up of uh, like a shareholder company. They are uh, basically formed and being organized by its members. Then we have got uh, institutional investors such as pension funds and investment funds. Now we all know what pension funds do. They take a small portion from your salary uh, or monthly. Uh, they require you to deposit a certain amount monthly. And when you get retired after 25 years or 20 years or 30 years, <coughs> depending upon the arrangement with the pension fund, they either deposit the give you the full amount which you have invested in them plus the return which they that amount has generated for you uh, and deposit it to, into your account or either you get a monthly like a salary or like a pension uh, in your uh, in your account. So that you can carry on. Then we have <coughs> excuse me, investment funds. Now investment funds do mostly the same thing. They take money uh, from the savings of the people and they invest it in the stocks and debt instruments and other financial instruments so that they can increase their wealth. Now we've got benefits of financial intimidation. <coughs> excuse me. Now we have got benefits of financial intimidation. Firstly, it offers a convenient way for lenders to save money. Then we have got uh, a ready source of funds to borrow even when money is in short supply. Even when money is difficult to obtain from people, the bank will always have a large reserve to support or to give loans to the businesses when they are needed. Then we have got aggregate small savings lending to borrowers in larger amounts. What they do is, uh, for example, a company requires a million dollars uh, in loan. It's quite obvious that not a lot of people have a million dollars in their bank account. So instead of uh, getting a one uh, a dollar or a loan of one million dollar directly from an individual, it gets a uh, loan from the bank. Now, bank is, uh, does not obtain one million dollar from uh, one single party. It has got a number of uh, people having their bank accounts in their bank. So it's a collection. It's a pool of funds all together, and they create a single instrument, a single loan agreement, and give it to the uh, pers personal company that requires those funds. Then we have got a financial institution. Sorry, then we got a risk for individual lenders is reduced by pooling losses uh, are borne by intermediary and shared among lenders in general. Now, the, even if the lender gets defaulted or is unable to pay its debt or is liquidated, so what happens next is uh, the people uh, who have their account in the bank or do not get affected by it the most uh, the worst case scenario that which they can face is they get the reduced rate of return which they expected otherwise other than that their principal amount stays safe so in this way there is no risk borne by the people who deposit their money in the banks then we have got financial institution offer Diversified portfolios covering a varied range of different securities. Now, different uh, providers of finance have different risk appetite. They have a number of in instruments or schemes available for the investors to invest in. Now, finance houses, financial institutions, what they do is they cater the need of the depositor or the person who is willing to invest uh, their funds. They create. They have a lot of instruments. There are a lot of uh, arrangements available uh, at their disposal to satisfy the risk appetite of the providers of finance. Then we have got they uh, number point number six. They provide maturity transformation, i.e., gap between lenders' wish of liquidity and desire of borrow for long-term loans. Uh, maturity transformation basically the gap between lenders who wish for liquidity and desire for borrowing or long-term debts. That's as simple as that. 
then we have got financial markets now in order to understand financial markets you first thing you need to understand what actually is a market market is basically a point of exchange now what happens here is that uh, markets when you go on to a supermarket to buy a bo uh, bottle of shampoo you pay it at the counter and take the bottle with you now that point uh, the point of exchange the tie the point at which you gave your money in exchange for the shampoo bottle is called a market for that shampoo now in this case that market is basically a supermarket so we can say that is a shampoo market or the supermarket is a part of a market of a shampoo market so that's basically a market then let's move on to the financial market now financial markets are markets where individuals with surplus funds lend funds to other individuals and organizations that want to borrow it's a type of direct finance between lenders savers borrowers or spenders now these channeling of funds results in economic efficiency as savers are not always the people who have good investment opportunities now financial markets <coughs> act more like an intermediary but uh, instead of creating a lot of chain of people to, through which the money is handed over to the ultimate user of finance it, it links directly those with surplus funds to those with the people who are in fund deficit they it creates a platform through which they interact directly and provide the funds directly to them that's the main function of financial market now there are a number of markets uh, uh, if you look at the uh, chart uh, underneath it it's a tire uh, of markets chart we do uh, we use a lot of terminologies when we address a market however the fundamental behind what actually we are talking about is basically a point of exchange for financial that is either we are obtaining a share for money shares against the money either we are obtaining a debt instrument against the money either we are getting other financial instruments against the money that we are willing to provide for those uh, shares or instruments first you got a primary market now primary market is basically a capital market where new uh, securities are issued and sold to investors now uh, if a company is being listed for the very first time uh, for example an XYZ company is uh, going to be listed for a very, very first time to New York Stock Exchange now for that company the XYZ company the New York Stock Exchange will be the primary market because it's using that market for the very first time to obtain the finance is issuing its securities for the very first time then we have got interbank market now bank lend short-term funds with each other the basic rate is set by the central banks however the they lend uh, uh, with each other or borrow with each other on their own specific terms which is obviously above the base rate which the state bank has set for them then we have got uh, so again the point here what is the market the point of exchange when we say that the banks are exchanging the money uh, for the liability being recognized so what they get they are that market is called an interbank market then we have got a euro currency market now bank lands uh, and borrow in foreign currencies as well so whenever bank land and borrow in foreign currency with each other that market is called euro currency market don't get confused with the name euro currency does not necessarily mean that that uh, borrowings will be in euros it could be in japanese yen for all it cares euro currency involves uh, basically the uh, word is used to uh, <coughs> explain that the uh, borrowing is done uh, not in the uh, currency format which is its own origin that is the uh, a company or a bank is borrowing in this case a bank is borrowing 
uh, although it established in UK, uh, its main currency is in UK pound, but in now it's borrowing in dollars, for example, and uh, it's called so that loan which is borrowing in dollars will be called a euro currency loan. So that's the uh, basically the term which we use for the loans that is obtained in foreign currency where that is uh, the currency which is not the one in which uh, it normally operates in. Then we have got certificate of deposit market, market for trading of certificate of deposits, negotiable instrument acknowledging deposit, we deposit the fund uh, and now that uh, uh, for uh, you can say certificate of deposit that uh, that certificate indicates the principal amount and uh, return that you'll be getting from it and now that uh, bond is, or you can say certificate of deposit is tradable in the market it goes up and down depending upon the market conditions then we have got local authority market local authorities when uh, when they are in dire need borrow funds short-term funds by issuing and selling short-term debt instruments in the market so that markets pertaining to the issue of short-term debt instrument uh, related uh, to you can say local authority uh, is called a local authority market. Then we have got finance house market dealing in short-term loans raised from money markets by finance houses. That's a finance house market inter company markets direct short-term lending between treasury departments of large companies commercial papers uh, that is the end bills are used for that so intercompany when companies borrow or lend directly to each other instead of using a bank as an intermediary they directly you for example i go to another company who shared a similar vision with me and ask them to fund me so that i can expand instead of going through an intermediary which is a lot of hassle they can offer to grant me directly the loan obviously the terms and condition will be according to the provider of finance because it has got it has the upper hand so that market that point of exchange uh, where we uh, exchange liability against the funds being given to us is called an intercompany market then we have got capital markets and money markets. Money markets are quite swift and volatile. Uh, it can change, they change it, uh, with seconds. So money markets are markets for trading short term financial instruments and short term lending and borrowing. If you require funding and if you want to trade your currencies, so that's the market for you, money markets. However, capital markets are markets for trading long term financial instruments such as equities and corporate bonds uh, now equities uh, provides return in on quarterly basis or a uh, half yearly basis or annual basis whereas bonds also provide return on annual basis so they are used uh, as a long term uh, source of finance uh, rather than a short term Then we have got a type of markets in UK. In UK, principal markets are the stock exchange, the main market, or companies with full stock market listing, where the listed entities shares are being sold and bought all the time. Then we've got the more loosely regulated second tier alternative investment market or AIM as well. Just for the sake of knowledge. Then we got ways to obtain funds. Now here the when uh, here what we are saying that uh, they may raise the share capital by inviting investors to take on equity stake in the company or to increase their existing equity stake basically here the day means company uh, when the company wants to obtain finance or obtain funds what they do they go to the financial houses or they or they if they are going to the stock exchange for the first time they have to go where a financial houses as an IPO they invest their funds they uh, obtain the listing uh, to which they start giving their shares out and start receiving the 
funds and if they if that company is already listed so all it has to do is to issue additional shares from its authorized share capital and gain additional finance now they may you uh, the companies may raise debt capital as well such as loan notes corporate bonds or convertible bonds these are different types of bonds we will be learning about also the financial instruments uh, in the finance uh, part of the lectures as well business finance part of the lectures so basically what it, uh, what here what they do is they uh, issue loan notes a uh, loan note is basically the they take the money for example a hundred dollar from you they give you the certificate in which it is written that this is the amount that you'll be getting after the end of the year and uh, with uh, it's also uh, uh, you can say it's uh, on it there's also mentioning of the interest rate which that instrument will earn you for example nine percent so at the end of the year what you will be getting is hundred oh nine that's the amount which you'll be getting on depositing hundred dollars now on buying that bond or that loan note from the stock exchange then we got primary and secondary market now primary markets enable organizations to raise new finance by issuing new shares or new bonds as i've just told you uh, if you're going to an ipo or through a finance or brokerage house that's uh, uh, in this case since you're using the stock exchange for the very first time that's your primary market secondary markets enable investors to buy and sell existing investments to each other now that i have bought the shares and i have the portfolio and uh, after some time i realized that i want to sell those now they have gained value and i want to sell that so i again go to the stock exchange and sell my share to some other person who are who is willing to buy those shares this operation is nowadays is done electronically so you can do that with the comfort of your home then we've got exchange traded instruments and over the counter markets now Secondary markets for financial instruments can be organized on exchanges. All from the all sort of secondary markets are exchanges such as London Stock Exchange, New York Stock Exchange, the London International Futures and Options Exchange. Then we've got alternate second time markets which can operate over the counter uh, where customers uh, negotiate individual transactions usually with an intermediary instead of an exchange. Uh, instead of going to uh, to the exchange what they do is uh, if i want to get a forward contract i would rather go to a bank and uh, instead of buying futures from the store uh, from the uh, financial futures and options exchange market i would rather go to a bank and ex fix my future transaction rate in foreign currency that uh, that's over the counter it's customizable. Uh, they will offer the contract according to the of my needs. They will be no fixed contract with all fixed term uh, um, uh, rules being imposed on me. Then we've got institutional investors. Now, institution uh, institutional investors are institutions uh, who have large amount of funds available to them, such as pension funds. Uh, so most companies what they do is instead of offering their shares to a wider public they issue their shares to a couple of institutional investment, uh, investors such as pension firms and insurance fund providers so that their portfolio is not widely spread now these funds so you can all right, uh, these funds invest in shares or bonds that offer satisfactory returns and securities are lended to the companies. Example, institutional investors are pension funds, insurance companies, and investment trusts. Venture capital organizations are also institutional investors because they have large amounts of money. Then we have got our next topic that is securitization. Securitization is basically 
uh, if uh, in the clear terms I would say is basically uh, using those funds that are locked in your fixed assets or non-current assets. If you look at the definition, it's a process of converting illiquid assets into marketable securities. These securities are backed by specific assets and are normally called asset-backed securities. Now, the, uh, let's suppose there is a textile industry, textile factory and we have got a plant to make cloth. Now the company intends to expand. Either it could go to the bank to obtain the loan or it can issue its shares in the market the stock market which I've just told you about or it can what it can do it either can go to the bank and turn on the securitization it can use its plant as a security to obtain the finance uh, it's basically in this way the asset uh, of substantial value the plant of substantial value uh, and the money tied in that uh, in those assets uh, is uh, obtained by the company to utilize in its expansion that money is now not locked in that however the liability of payment of principal and the interest stands over here rises over here and which which, uh, all, uh, which obviously needs to be satisfied so, in the process of, now I'm repeating the definition again, the process of converting illiquid assets into marketable securities, these securities are backed by specific assets such as from the court, that's why they are called asset-backed securities. Then we've got mortgage uh, uh, bond example, the, it's the moon, most common type of security uh, and one of the reasons the financial crisis in 2008 was what happens basically over here is that banks, the people who obtain loan from the banks means that they have to return the principal amount, the amount which they have borrowed and also the interest pertaining those amount. They have to uh, return the principal amount and also the interest uh, pertaining to the borrowing of that amount. So, an insecurity uh, since they are using those funds to buy a house, the house itself becomes a security in this process. Now, the thing over here is that these funds being obtained by the people are for a huge amount of time, like 25 years to 30 years. So, uh, for all those years, the bank's money gets stuck. Uh, un on those loans so what bank had a very clever idea what it started to do is start pooling those loans together created an instrument or mortgage bond and sold it to the institutional investor for example it pulled a hundred loans together into a single bond and sold it to the institutional investor in this way now the institutional investor basically has the right to obtain the principal and the finance because it has paid for that bond immediately to the bank. The bank has immediately sold the fund which it can use again to give it to the, to obtain or if it has an opportunity to use it over there. Now the principal and the interest is paid <coughs> by the people to the bank only but bank, instead of becoming an asset in the bank statement of financial position, it becomes a liability because it has to pay this amount as it is to the institutional investor or to the mortgage bond holder. That's how mortgage bond uh, was made. Then we have got this intimidation. Now, because of the securitization, uh, there, this has led to the disintermediation, which is defined as a decline in traditional deposit and lending relationship between banks and their customers, and an increase in direct relationship between the ultimate supplier and the users of finance. Disintermediation is basically the removal of intermediaries from the systems of the people of who are willing to give to the funds and the people who are who in who want to receive it, who are in dire need to obtain those funds. 
then let's have a look at an international markets as well now international money and capital markets first thing we have got a euro currency market now euro currency is a currency which is held by individual and institution outside the currency of issue of that currency for example i'm in the uk and have a currency of uh, let's suppose a ten thousand dollars with me right now so what i'll be ho holding is a euro currency again over here i need to remind you that euro currency don't get confused with the term euro currency does not necessarily mean that the loan will be in euros it can be of any currency but will be different from the currency from your home currency so when a company borrows in foreign currency that loan is called euro loan now uh, it it must have a strike in your mind there must be an euro uh, equity as well for your sake there is uh, we will be discussing over uh, discussing about that as well firstly let's uh, continue with the euro currency markets euro currency markets involve the depositing of funds with a bank outside the country of the currency in which the funds are denominated and relending these funds for a fairly short term typically 3 months what they do is actually in euro currency markets uh, they deposit funds with a bank outside the country not in their own country for example uh, no, they deposit the, the company will deposit the fund not in uk but in the usa and uh, they gain through, uh, from this by relending it or uh, if they want to invest over there in a portfolio they can or either borrow the loan from those foreign banks in this case it will be a euro loan then we have got international bond market well it's a different thing international bond market is basically a euro bond market or bond denominated in a currency which often differ from that of the country of issue for example malaysia wants to issue euro bonds it will issue the euro bond in dollars not in malaysian dollar but in US dollars. So here the bond is called uh, euro bond because it differs from the currency uh, in which it be basically operates in. A euro bond. Uh, 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 I'm reading it again. A euro bond is a bond denominated in a currency which differs from the current uh, from that of the country of issue. There is also less highly developed market in the international or equity shares market as I have just told you in the last uh, topic that there is an equity market but unlike debt instruments which are backed by securities uh, equity is not backed by securities they are simply being issued by the companies uh, and the share uh, and the people who hold them have the right to say in the voting right and uh, to the uh, also have the right to return Right, to get, obtain the returns from the profit so they are not backed by an asset so they are highly risky when it comes when compared to the debt instrument that's why there is a market a euro market an international bond market but there is a, there is an equity market but uh, unlike bond market is not very popular then we have got euro bond uh, are basically long term loans uh, uh, between 10 to 15 years raised by international companies big companies only can issue euro bonds like unilever or png and so they to investor in several countries at the same time now they can issue euro bond and what they do is spread those bonds across different exchanges so they appear on different exchanges with the same base currency for example uh, company from Europe intends to obtain a euro bond what they do is that they go to the exchanges uh, and start dispersing the euro bonds the euro bonds um, uh, just for the sake of simplicity the euro bonds uh, are there will get uh, will uh, start to appear on the screens of different exchanges across the world now the base currency will be in not in euros but in dollars since it's a euro bond so it will be in dollars or any other currency which is which they seems fairly enough so that's how 
it's spread uh, it spreads out euro bonds may be more suitable for multinational companies uh, which require long term loan to finance a big capital expansion program in any country for example so basically these bonds are not issue for one or two years they will at least be of 10 years or five at least a minimum of five years uh, not below that then we require borrowings which are not subject to national exchange control of any government. So the borrowings which they will be getting from offering a euro bond are not subject to, they are not issued to any one country or specific country. So no, no law of any spe uh, specific country can affect it. There is no uh, uh, regulations in most of the countries across the world about euro bonds. So. Uh, they are uh, they do not get regulated they are not subject to the regulation by the government then we have got an investor subscribing the bond issue will be concerned about the following factors number one is security what is the security behind it they will be concerned about since they are investing to a completely blank area uh, as i've just told you they are not very much regulated so they will be highly interested what uh, is given by the bond issuer then we have got marketability whether those bonds will have a marketability will uh, normally is a yes because they are sold and bought simultaneously across the exchanges in the on the world so they have a marketability uh, but still they will look at this factor then we have got anonymity now uh, euro bonds are issued and the bear's name so if you lo lose the document, the bond document, there will be no trace that you actually hold it. There is no regulation, no track record. The company could simply deny it. And uh, since, as I just told you, they are not regulated. So there's nothing uh, which you can do about it. And that's why Euro bond is the, one of the favorite mechanisms of the black economy or the money launderers across the world then we have got the return on investment obviously with all this into account the return is quite good uh, above the uh, normal return that you would get from a normal bond so let's keep it here